Getting a really colorful, crisp, and noise-free astrophotography photo isn't actually that hard. I've been doing astrophotography for quite a while now, and I think one of the main problems people have when they're new at astrophotography is they tend to put their effort in the wrong places. And a lot of that effort tends to go into processing, and while processing is a great skill to have, it won't necessarily make you a better astrophotographer if you're over-processing your images. Let's say you have an image and you over-process it, you're basically getting at noise, artifacts, blurring, all sorts of stuff you don't want to deal with. So yes, processing can be good to a certain extent, but don't overdo it. But one of the larger problems I see astrophotographers having is definitely not spending enough time outside meaning they're not taking enough integration time, they're not spending enough time setting up their telescope, meaning uh, setting up polar alignment, setting up the mount and everything. They're not spending enough time leveling. They're just not spending enough time outside setting up. And then this is definitely a key thing you need to spend time on if you're a new astrophotographer, especially because you don't want trailing stars, you don't want uh, tons of noise and very low signals, low SNR, uh, signal noise ratio. You don't want that. So you definitely want to make sure you're taking a lot of integration time, spending a lot of time setting up outside. Another mistake I see a lot of new astrophotographers doing is taking too many targets in one night. Now, one target's okay to take, obviously. You want to take one target to get as much data as possible. Let's say you look at an image of the North American Nebula, but then you switch to the Eagle Nebula. Well, this is going to be bad because the Eagle Nebula and the North American Nebula are two separate targets, so you're not going to get as much data for one target, meaning you're going to get two bad images rather than one great image, if that makes sense, because both images just won't have enough data to bring out the real signal in the image. So that's why astrophotographers tend to recommend that you take one target per night. Another thing a lot of newer astrophotographers tend to do is overexpose their images, meaning like you'll get bloated stars and you'll get like blur your uh, galaxies and stuff, whatever you're photographing, but do not overexpose because no matter what, if you're stacking the images, like let's say you have a 30 second exposure and then you wanted to switch to one minute, well say the 30 second exposure, you'll ha you have more 30 second exposures and less one minute exposure, so basically you get the same amount of time roughly but you're not really going to get more detail out of the overexposed one. You're just going to get more blurriness, actually. You're going to get overexposed stars, too, which are hard to fix in post-processing. So there's really no point in overexposing your astrophotography. Make sure, even underexposing is better than overexposing. Make sure you don't overexpose your astrophotography, for sure. Oh, and by the way, if you're thinking your DSLR for astrophotography could really be a problem, I don't think it could be, because this video right here will prove that, actually, you can take great images with just a DSLR. By the way, my name is Asher, and if you like to keep up with my latest content, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, until next time, clear skies.